So um, I'm going to read uh, a fight scene, but it's, there's one boxing scene in this book, and I'm not going to read that. I'm going to read um, the fights that happen outside of the big um, boxing fight that happens in the middle of the book. Um, and this is when our hero, towards the end, um, meets his uh, rival uh, traveler from the canal for a final bloody fight, um, which is full of chaos and sort of resolves lots of tensions in the book. So. Bobby could see sky from a flickering part of his left eye and the sun still hot and gold. The shouts and the heat around him roared. Bobby could see the blade, could taste the blood from the blade, a neat, sweet cup from eye to mouth, neater than the jagged mark Bobby had left on Connor. And he could hear them all, the crowd of cowards, all screeching and swearing, thrilled to see him cut up, to see Bobby being sliced up under the sun. When it was done, Connor stumbled back, dizzy, dropped the blade into the canal and looked at his hands. There was a cheer, like a packed pub clearing after a football match, men jostling each other and yapping, holding onto each other in dizzy hysteria. Denny laughed with the rest of the men. Connor, you got away with yourself there. Connor was shaking. He went to Bobby and held his hand out. Get up. But Bobby wouldn't take it. Bobby, come on now, I'll give you my hand. Bobby turned away and Connor began to mutter. It's just a cut. Connor spat on the ground. He whispered over and over to himself, it's just a cut, it's just a cut. Denny put his big arm around him and led him away. Some followers lingered over Bobby's body, too excited to go just yet. They leered at him, kicked dirt in his face, into the wet and open wound. And as Denny yelled for them, they began to leave, one by one, heading towards the pub. The skinny men who danced around Connor began recording Bobby's body on their phones, getting close-ups of the cup. Stop fucking filming him! Teresa screamed as she ran from the top of the steps where she'd watched it all. She pushed between her dad and Connor, whose head was still hung so low he hardly felt her pass. Only Denny kept his eye on her as he let her say goodbye. She let out a small gasp when she saw what was left of Bobby. Fucking leave him alone now. Fuck off. She grabbed one of the phones from the, phone, from the one still filming and threw it into the canal. They sloped off and called her a slag, safely out of Denny's earshot, but she didn't care. She knelt down and checked Bobby's eyes were open. His grimace through the blood looked like a smile, his teeth blossomed pink with spit and blood, his left cheek carved out. He had lost, finally. She touched his shoulder, her eyes running over the punches and cuts. Bobby, your face. Teresa, get on. Denny barked down to her. She looked up at them and Bobby saw the tears. Why didn't you fight back, Bobby, why? Why did you let them do this? He smiled, tired. He let her pull him up and smiled punch drunk. Bobby took his shaking, blood-tipped fingers and touched her hair. She held him upright, trying not to hurt him. She moved his hand to her shoulder. You would have won if you'd given him a fight. Denny shouted for her again. She turned Bobby towards a bench a few yards away. Bobby, sit down for a second, please. Let me see how bad this is. You need a hospital. She went to lead with him. She went to lead him with her, but he moved back and shook his head again. Sighing, she took a tissue from her bag and softly dabbed the blood from his nose, chin, and lips. It was sore, but he let her. It looks nasty. As she cleaned him, Bobby took her hand away and rested it on her waist, pulling her body in as he held himself up. She wobbled in her heels. They stood there together in a strange hug, waiting to get steady. It looks so bad, Bobby. Worse than when she'd seen him at his door. He had fighting him then. Now, he had given up. Teresa put some tissues in his hand, and Bobby held three on his face. The blood soaked through them all. Teresa put the rest of the packet in her handbag and breathed hard before any tears could fall. But they did. And Bobby could see them, and he could hear them in her voice. Teresa knew she'd always known how it would end up. They were concrete in chaos and rage and skin, bashing skin and fire and hurt. And now silent and at rest, they would always have each other splintered somewhere in each other's body. He felt a shudder of pain up his back. Even now he could feel her. They came from the same brick and dust. 
Teresa, please, she spoke in a whisper. Go, Teresa. It was sore to say. He was bleeding fast now, from somewhere in his insides too, and it started to go into shock. His pulse fast and his skin pale. He mumbled. You have to leave me alone. He was going to fall. She looked to the ground, a frown that held back the sob she wanted to let go. Please don't make me go with them. She tried one last time to make him keep her. Bobby held his cheek and dribbled pink blood. And he said nothing. Teresa took a step back. She put on her sunglasses, took a cigarette from her bag and lit it. She went back up to meet her dad. The long, skinny legs and golden leather heels looked as if they'd snap every time she put her foot down. At the top, she pulled at her dress, and Denny pulled her by the ponytail. A few steps in, she turned and pretended to look in her bag for a lighter as she searched one more time for Bobby's cold, white face. It was over. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Oliver Goldstein.